Welcome back. Okay, today's lesson is on section 5.5, factoring ax squared plus bx plus c. So a standard form quadratic expression. We want to be able to factor this if the a value is not 1 and it cannot be factored out. If we remember, yesterday we learned how to factor this if the a value was 1 or it could be factored out. Okay, here's the steps for doing that. Basically, how we did it was, okay, so you'll see the a value is 1 here. Okay. How we did this, we found factors that multiply to give 12 and add to give 7. So 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 plus 4 is 7. So we put those into our um, x plus r times x plus s factors. We let 4 be our r, 3 be our s. So this would be equal to x plus 4, x plus 3. Okay, and for this one, our a value is not 1, but it can be factored out. Okay, we can take a 2 out from each term. So this would give us 2 times x squared minus x minus 6. Okay, and then from this point, we can factor this expression here, because this is a quadratic in standard form that has an a value of 1. Okay, so we could factor that into um, two um, factors that multiply to give negative 6 and add to give negative 1. Okay, so the negative 1 here. Multiply to negative 6, add to negative 1 would be negative 3 and positive 2. Okay, so that's how we would factor that one. That's just a very, very quick demonstration. Go back and watch the, the 5.4 lesson if you want to be clear on how to do this. Okay. What do we do if the a value is not 1 and it can't be factored out? Like in this example, our a value is 3, and we can't factor that out because 3 doesn't go into 8 and 4. So how we do that? Step number 1, always when we're factoring, check to see if there's a common factor. Okay. Step number 2, take the a value and multiply it by the c value and determine what factors multiply to give this, this number. Okay. The a, the a times the c, so what factors multiply to give that, and add to give b. Break the b value up into those factors, okay? And then we factor by grouping, by putting parentheses around the first two variables and the last two, and then factor by grouping, okay? So let's put these steps into motion, so you'll see how they work, okay? So I have 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. My a value is 3. I can't factor that out, so I have to use this longer method. Okay, so step number one, I need to find two integers whose product is 3 times 4, a times c, or a times c is 12. Okay, I need to find I need to find two factors whose product is 12 and whose sum is b, or b value is 8. So I need to find factors of 12, whose product is 12, and whose sum is 8. Okay. So I know factors of 12, which product is 12, um, 12 and 1, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, okay, those all multiply to give 12. Which ones add to give 8? Um, that doesn't, two, 2 plus 6 is 8, that's good, 3 plus 4 is 7, okay, so I'm going to use 2 and 6, because they multiply to give 12, add to give 8. So what I'm going to do from here, since 2 and 6 satisfy the product and sum that I need, I'm going to break, break up 8x into 2x and 6x, okay? 2x plus 6x is 8x. We're just going to break up the 8x into that so that we can factor by grouping, okay? So instead of 3x squared plus 8x plus 4, I'm now going to have 3x squared plus 2x plus 6x plus 4. Okay? That's equivalent to what we started with. Okay? We just broke up the 8x into 2x plus 6x. Okay? Now I'm going to factor by grouping. So I have 3x squared plus 6x plus 2x plus 4. If you need a refresher on how to factor by grouping, go back and watch the 5.3 tutorial. Okay? It's near the end of that one. Okay. Factoring by grouping, I need to break these this polynomial up into groups that I that have common factors. 
Okay. There's nothing between all of these terms that I can take out. Okay. They don't all. There's no common common factor between them. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them into groups. 3x squared and 6x. I'll put those in a group because I can take out an x from both of those. And I'm going to put 2x and 4 in a group because I can take out a 2 from both of those. And I'm going to separate them with an addition sign because by separating them with an addition sign, I'm keeping the equation equivalent. Okay? Because when we add polynomials, the rule for adding polynomials is that you can just drop the brackets. Okay? So if I drop these brackets, I'm back to what I started with. Okay? So putting this addition sign between the two groups keeps our equations equivalent, which we have to do. Okay, our next step in factoring by grouping is taking out a common factor from each group. So I can take out, I can actually take out a 3x from this one, okay, and that leaves me with x plus 2, okay, and I can take out a 2 from this one, okay, and that leaves me with an x plus 2, okay. 2x divided by 2 gives me x, 4 divided by 2 gives me 2, okay. And now you'll notice, okay, I have a binomial common factor. These both have an x plus 2. Both terms have an x plus 2. So I can take out that x plus 2 from both terms. Once I divide both terms by x plus 2, the x plus 2s will cancel, and I'll be left with 3x plus 2. And there are my factors of our original equation there. Okay, x plus 2 times 3x plus 2. Good, let's try another one. Okay, I have 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. My a value is not 1, and it cannot be factored out. So I have to use these steps here. Okay, the long steps. So, find two integers whose product is a times c. Our a times c is 24. Okay, 4 times 6. And our b value, we need to find factors whose sum is 11. So factors of 24 whose product is 24 and sum is 11. Okay, so um, 2 and 12, that gives us 24. 2 times 12 is 24. Um, 24 times 1, that gives us 24. 3 times 8, that gives us 24. Uh, let's see if any of these Oh, let's do one more. 4 times 6. That gives us 24. Let's see if any of these factors, these all of these factors multiply to give 24. Let's see which ones add to give 11. Okay, 2 plus 12 is 14, so that didn't work. 24 plus 1 is 25, so that doesn't work. 3 plus 8 is 11, so that works. So that's what we can use. We can use 3 and 8. So we're going to, since 3 and 8, satisfy the product. We're going to break 11x up into 3x plus 8x. Now we are going to factor by grouping. Okay, So we're going to break up 6x squared plus 11x plus 4 into 6x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 4. Okay, So 6x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 4. Is that right? So 3x, 8x plus 4. Good. Factor by grouping. Put them into groups that have common factors. So 6x squared and 3x. I could common factor 3x out of that. And 8x plus 4. I could common factor a 4 out of that. And I remember I put an addition sign between the two groups. Okay. That's what we do that to keep these equations equivalent. Just adding polynomials, you drop the bracket. Okay, good. So, common factor out of 3x of this first group. That gives me 2x plus 1. And I'm going to common factor a 4 out of the second group. And that gives me a 2x plus 1. And now you'll see I have another binomial common factor I can take out. Take out that 2x plus 1. Don't forget to keep it in brackets. If I take out the 2x plus 1, all I have left is a 3x plus 4 as my second factor. Okay, so these are my factors of my original question here, of 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. These are my two factors. Okay, good. 
another example. Another example. Okay, I'm not going to use the chart this time. We're going to try and do it without it. So you'll notice my A value is three. I, it's not, which isn't one. Okay, so we have to use the long method because also this three can't be factored out. Okay, so we have to use the long method. Find two integers whose product is three times two. So A times C is three times two, which is six, and whose sum is seven because my B value is seven. Okay. So two numbers who multiply to give 6 and add to give 7 are 6 and 1. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So I'm going to break 7x into 6x and 1x. Okay. Now I'm going to factor by grouping. Okay. So I'm going to break that 7x up first, 3x squared. I'm going to put that 7x as a 6x plus 1x instead. Okay. That way I can factor by grouping. So I have 3x squared plus 6x plus x plus, is it 2? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I need to put these into groups that have common factors. Okay. So 3x squared and 6x, those have a common factor of 3x, so I could put those in a group. But then I would have x plus 2 in my other group, and there's nothing I can common factor out of there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put 3x squared and x together, and I'm going to put 6x and 2 together. Okay, That way there's a common factor in both groups that I can take out, and make sure I have the addition sign between them. I can take out an x from the first group, that leaves me with 3x plus 1, and I can take out a 2 from the second group, and that also leaves me with 3x plus 1. Take out my binomial common factor, take out the 3x three, three plus 1, okay, and what I'm left with after I divide each term by 3x plus 1 is just x plus 2, okay, so my two factors are 3x plus 1 and x plus 2, good, example 4, okay, I need to, okay, look at my a value first, my a value is not 1 and it can't be factored out, okay, 6 doesn't go into 5 and 1, so I have to use the long method that we're learning today. Okay. I need to find two integers who product, whose product is a times c, which is 6 times 1, which is 6, and whose sum is negative 5, because my b value is negative 5. Okay. So two integers whose product is 6 and whose sum is negative 5, that would be negative 2 and negative 3. Okay, negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. Negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. Okay, hopefully we're getting good at finding those, those numbers that satisfy the sum and products. Okay, so I'm going to break up that negative 5x into negative 2x minus 3x. Okay, negative 2x minus 3x gives me negative 5x. Okay, so that's equivalent. So I'm now going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to break that up. 6x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 1. Okay? So let's factor that by grouping. So I have 6x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 1. Whoops. 3x plus 1. Okay, good. So I put a little reminder here for us. We factor by grouping the polynomials must be separated by an addition sign, just to remind us, because we have some negative signs in here. Okay, so I'm going to put these into groups and then see if I can factor stuff out. Okay, so I'm going to put 6x squared and minus 2x together. Okay, because I know I'll be able to factor out a 2x of that. And I'm going to separate with an addition sign. I'm going to put negative 3x plus 1 together. I could factor out a negative 1 of that, okay, and to get rid of that negative sign on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to take out a 2x from this first factor, and that gives me 3x minus 1, and I'm going to take out a negative 1, and that's going to leave me with 3x minus 1 here as well, okay, and you'll notice now that I once again have a binomial common factor. 